So we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to do some deep work. But most importantly, we're going to meet some fellow travelers of the way. So we'll know that we never have to do anything alone. There'll be people in this community that you'll meet, that you'll know no matter what's going on, they'll be here for you. So every fit for service is unique and it's meant to be a unique dialogue between all of us where we're listening. We have a few things planned, of course, but we're in conversation. And I think one of the challenges is that a lot of us feel alone, right? I mean, this is probably part of the calling why many of you are here. It's so that you don't have to do it alone. And you don't. You don't. As I see it, our deepest fear, deepest fear, is to be seen and rejected. To be seen and not loved. So, most of us, we just don't let anybody see us. It's a good strategy to prevent the deepest fear from actually happening. But the problem with that, not allowing ourselves to be seen, is then, all right, we won't be rejected. But then we're never actually going to be loved either. The only chance that we ever have to be loved is to be seen. Because if someone's loving something and you're hiding something from them, you're not, that love's not going to land. Because there's a projection that's like three feet in front of you. And all of that love is just going to be beaming right towards that projection. And you're going to be just waiting like, that must be nice for that projection of me that I'm showing. I can't feel it, but you know, must be nice for that fake thing that I created. So the more that we open and the more that we see that the world as embodied by each other is a loving place, the more free we become. Today's the start of the Sedona Summit, and I have like a different feeling for this one. I know from experience by now that people are feeling nervous. It's like the nervous, excited jitters. I'm very out of my comfort zone. Excited, yeah. nervous. Excitement, a little bit of anxiety. I think everybody gets a little bit self-conscious on the first day, and then they quickly realize that they're safe to just relax and be themselves. Like if you get to bring a friend skydiving for the first time, like you remember how nervous you were, and you also know how safe and beautiful it is. Day one, it is a homecoming, a family, family that just feel like home, even in the first interaction. How are we feeling? Gratitude. Very like grounded, just being here. It's the energy that everyone has is like, oh, home, hello. Yeah. Why are you making new friends? Fit for service, day one. Where the magic is about to pop off, yo! We're like in this bitch, can I say that? And so really the invitation of this summit is to just look, just look and see. Just open, 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 and look, and be curious, and have courage, and have fun, and follow your desire, and your like, and your laughter. And let's do this thing, y'all. Let's do this thing, y'all. Kanshila, thank you, Creator, thank you. As we step into our greater capacity to respond to life, as we evolve right now, in this moment, in this breath, remembering our true purpose on this beautiful earth. Together we pray to the setting sun right now. Aho! Now bringing into your attention and your mind's eye, your attention and your intention, when we have an intention, it is like loading a straight arrow into the bow to hit the target. What is it that has been surfacing up for you recently? What would you like clarity with? Guidance? Support? What is it that you are ready to release? What is not serving you on all planes of existence? 
Allow us to feel the prayer of our lives awaken. The theme of this whole event is making conscious the shadow. So there's a part that we don't see, maybe because we don't want to look, maybe because we just haven't been taught to look. And so we're going to bring the light of our consciousness to the shadow of those parts of ourselves that are hidden. So that can be deeply challenging work, but we're here for it. That's what we're here for. We had the opportunity to bring together a really beautiful group of people and drop them into a conversation around death. This one life is just the doorway in and the doorway out. We might think of like the eternal thread with each of these successive lives just being a bead on a string. When that really sets in, then you can hold truly the both sides of the paradox the grief and the celebration and the joy. And one side doesn't take over the other side, but having both and holding the paradox of death is really, I think, the key to actually bringing death out of the shadow, shadow of what we do not know and shadow of what we're afraid to look at. What does our relationship with life become when we are able to become intimate with death? How can death inform our path ahead? I feel like I was really connected to it. I really dropped into my heart and started writing and I feel like it helped me a lot see my value in a really uh, pure way. Today, I realized why I'm here right now is to bring me back to my heart. I've been feeling like disconnected from who I am and what I'm here for and the difference I'm making in the world and it literally today just dropped me right back in to where I need to be. The fundamental force that brings particles together is Eros. Your shame is a force powerful enough to be the first force in 14 billion years that inhibits Eros. And when I realized that, I was like, how the fuck have I never read a book about shame? You know, we're not accustomed to being still. It's not rewarded. So we're going to go on the land with nothing. But there's something about the reality of using our bodies in a way with the inner wildness that does exist that allows us to move through the tamed, domesticated thing we've become and re keep that thing alive that's inside us, that is there and needs to be honored. We're taking the pause today to just get still and see what rises when we get still. This is time for the silence between the notes that makes the music alive. When we don't know what to do, we ask. And if we listen and we're clear, there's an offering, there's an opportunity. I want to see what I haven't seen yet. I want to look in this shadow and around this corner. I want to open my eyes. The work we're going to do here today is like an archaeologist, also like a child, just excited curiosity to look. The wholeness of who we are, it's all in us. And the moment that we actually see it, and we don't flinch, we don't have that cringe and shame, we say, ah, that's what I see. I am that too. There it is. That's that part of me. The moment we make that conscious, that's another form of magic. Then a new aspect of who we are comes online and a new wholeness starts to develop. What does the vital, living, erotic life force of our expression desire? And when we get in touch with that and we don't inhibit ourselves for fear of exile, or loss of love, life comes back into our bodies. We reclaim aliveness, so the mission is more aliveness. And when we want that, when, that is, when that's the reason we dare to look, it's a lot sweeter 
and more accessible to find that place of excited curiosity that's like, yeah, hell yeah, I'm going to look at what I haven't looked at yet because I want to be alive. I think people are just waiting to feel safe enough to reveal the part of themselves that they've never thought was okay to reveal before. It's amazing how afraid we are to say the difficult thing. Yeah. And then once somebody says it's okay, the energy that flows out of that space is just so surprising. It's because we could crave it so much. So wanting to feel not alone. What we get to do here is we get to be the living embodiment and example of people who are free enough to play, people who are free enough to love, people who are free enough to trust. And sometimes you got to go through your own shadows, your own walls, your own challenges. And we're going to do that this week too. But we're going to give ourselves a taste of what that play feels like here. in quantum physics called retro causality where the future has effects going on in the present moment and so people are feeling stuff bubbling up for them right now because their body knows that they're about to go through a massive transformation and so it's the bubbling up of nervousness anxiety one of my mentors said nervousness is excitement without the breath so we'll bring breath into it very soon. The type of breath that we're looking for and the theme for today is tender fierceness. Tender fierceness, same time, tender and fierce, dragon heart, same time, tender fierce. This is the beautiful thing about breath is you're in control of your breath. You're in control. Trust yourself to know how much breath is enough and trust yourself to go farther than you think you can because that's where you'll discover things about yourself that you haven't known before. So it's the combination of both, trusting your guidance and then pushing yourself to actually evolve, to grow beyond the limitations that you think you have in your mind and trying to distinguish those messages that come from the soul or those messages that come from the mind. But it's your breath. You're in charge. And we're just here to guide you. It was amazing. So everyone went all the way in and it was a beautiful journey. You know, there were some big releases in the space. They're just releasing a lot of energy, you know, a lot of stress and tension and unexpressed emotions and their sympathetic nervous system is getting activated in a safe way. So anything that they've held on from the past that's no longer serving, serving them is being released from the mind-body system, you know. And it's a beautiful thing when someone gets out of their own way and allows themselves to like, you know, feel what needs to be felt to process it, to let it go and release it from the body. I think the common theme that I see everyone being able to walk away with is permission to play a bigger game in life, permission to feel more of their humanity, permission to feel more of their emotions and know that they can skillfully navigate their, their lived experience. Integration is the space where knowledge becomes wisdom. When we integrate, it actually becomes the essence of who we are. 
So we just went through a ceremony. We went through a portal space. So breathe what you learned, what you accessed, what you activated today into your everyday moment. The integration is where we actually evolve and segue into the next chapter of our life. Take a moment to just check in with yourself. Close your eyes if that feels comfortable for you. What is alive on your heart? It could be something from this week. It could be something from this morning. Just whatever feels most alive on your heart. It was what I didn't know I was looking for. I mean, it's like your heart is cracking open. It's what every exercise this week did to me. My heart has exploded like so many times in the best way. Just seeing from the outside what's going on with this group, it's easy to feel like, oh, you know, maybe this isn't for me or maybe not, I'm not part of that crowd. But I just came and was welcomed with open arms by everybody I met and lifelong friendships were made. I'm just so forever grateful. What's interesting about this moment right here is actually what's happening right now, all of you guys connecting with each other, is probably a lot more important than whatever I'm going to say. Because the secret is that the only way we're going to do this and enjoy doing this and succeed in doing this thing is doing it together. And all of these practices and initiations and talks and everything that we've done, it's about deepening our togetherness. And, of course, healing and expanding our consciousness, understanding true stories from the stories that we tell ourselves. Story is important. And... In a way, story is the most important. And the power that we all have is to write our own story and collectively write a new story. And we have to write a new story. A new story about how people can come together and be vulnerable with strangers. And then those strangers become friends. So my invitation for all of you in integration is to trust yourself, trust yourself and hold your story precious. And no, you don't have to fight back when somebody's trying to challenge your story, just see it. Because as soon as you see it, as soon as you see that someone's trying to incept and undermine the story, as soon as you see that, you'll see it for what it is and it won't land. It only works just like shame. It only works when it's hidden, when it's happening on the subconscious. And that's what will start to unravel this. And we can do it to ourselves too. The old stories that can start to come into this new story and say, that shit wasn't real. I don't know what happened for those five days, but. Most people have no felt experience of what it's like to do hard shit, hard, vulnerable, emotional work in a group of 100 or 200 people. And we all have this secret belief that we've never challenged that if we were truly vulnerable, we would be exiled. And to see 100 or 200 people weep together or dance in a way that feels embarrassing to them, and then to look to their right and look to their left and see people who feel like brothers or sisters that they've never met, I think it transforms one of the biggest wounds that we have in our culture right now, which is that most people don't trust the other. They don't trust strangers. They assume people are trying to trick them, steal from them, exploit them. And what I'm most proud about what Fit for Service does is it changes people's somatic experience of a stranger. And so another part of this is not to just be alone as you integrate this. Like you form these connections in this community, like stay together. Talk to each other, remind each other, hey, you remember that? Hey, you remember that? Man, wasn't that cool when that? 
Like that's, that to me, I think is, is the most important part of the integration is that the story is actually weaving through your story. And if we can allow that story to weave through our story, and then ideally it weaves through the collective story, which is what we're here to do, to face that shared horizon together.